Greetings, hello, welcome to another video in Daily December. Today I wanted to recap the other books that I've read in 2022. The last time I did this video, I think it might have been in like July or so, and I've read a handful of books since then. I think I'll still probably get one or two more in left in December, but I just wanted to go ahead and film this for you today because I did just finish a book. So if I look freezing, it's because I am. I was skiing today and I did like four runs because I was just so, so cold and I'm still freezing. I have tea here. I'm trying to be a tea girly. I'm not a fan. It doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste good. But you know, I'm trying not to drink all the sugar of hot chocolate all the time, every time I want a warm drink. But I also don't want caffeine from tea. So I'm only doing caffeine free teas. If you have any suggestions down below, please leave them down below. All right, so I'm not gonna be going in any order of like reading the books or anything, mostly because I simply cannot remember the order in which I read these books, <laughs> but I will be putting the, I think I'll probably put a picture of the like front of the book right here so that you can recognize things kind of by, um, what was that called, cover, wow. All right, so one of the books that I read recently was A Stolen Life by J.C. Dugard. I think that's how you say her name. Um, she was kidnapped at the age of nine, I think, and she was held in captivity for like 16 years or something like that. Like I think she was in her 20s by the time that she was like released from captivity and her kidnappers went to jail which is just so crazy and it's just a little bit of a biography of her time um, and like what she went through and everything and it's a really interesting book and story and yeah it's just kind of crazy because she had access she had access to the internet for many years during her captivity and would even go on like outings with her captors and never tried to run or anything like that but it like makes sense when she when like it doesn't make sense but it makes sense you know when she like reading through her views on all of the time and everything like that and the manipulation and brainwashing and everything that she went through so that one was actually really interesting um and I find it I find it interesting to see like the perspectives of a trauma survivor just because they are so different from like someone thinking logically like oh well you should try to run I don't know I recommend it it was pretty good it was a really quick read there are obviously some things that are really hard to read in there childhood sexual violence kidnapping things like that so like there are things that are hard to read um, but I thought it was quite good I also read Invisible Women which is an absolutely amazing book I think it's Invisible Women, oh, something about women and data science. Oh, I can't remember now, but it was so, so good. That's like one of those books that I wanna like shove down everyone's throats and be like, you have to read this book. It's so interesting, it's so enlightening. And it's just, it was amazing. It was really interesting and eye-opening even as a woman who like thinks about the ways in which the world is like sexist, I guess, um, to put it in a way that makes sense but I think everyone should read it especially like men in positions of power I think it would be really helpful one of the chapters was literally about like can I think it was titled like can plowing snow be sexist and one of the case studies was I think it was somewhere in like Scandinavia they moved from plowing major streets to plowing major sidewalks first um, because women are much more likely to be the ones using sidewalks because they're like walking to the grocery store, they're pushing their kids in their stroller, they're walking their kids to school, whereas men are more likely to be the ones using the main thoroughfare roads. And for the most part, if it's just like a couple of inches of snow, it doesn't like it doesn't necessarily need to be plowed on the streets. But clearing it off the sidewalks makes a really big difference because it's much easier to drive a car through three inches of snow than it is to push a stroller through three inches of snow. And just things like that. Um, the inequity of bathroom space allocated between men and women. Men have, men and women tend to have the same size bathrooms, but as we all know, men's bathrooms typically have quite a few urinals and then like stalls, maybe a half and half, I, I don't know for sure. But there, therefore, twice as many men are able to move through a bathroom as once at once compared to a women's bathroom, given the same amount of space. 
and women obviously take longer in bathrooms because there are periods to deal with there are the fact there's the fact that we just have to like sit down to pee and then also women are much more likely to be um elderly like women have like longer life expectancies so elderly women are more common than elderly men people who are disabled are more likely to be women who also need more time in the bathroom and just stuff like that like things that I never really considered and it was an excellent book and I'm gonna stop talking about it right now because I have talked about it far too much but highly 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 recommend. Uh, another book that I really enjoyed was called Me, Myself and Why um, and it was all about like the the science be behind like your personality and your brain and why your personality is the way that it is and I thought it was a really interesting read. It was a good intro to some of the science. I was quite familiar with a handful of the science specifically when thinking about like DNA like it had this whole section on like what is DNA and proteins and gene expression and things like that. So if that's not something that you're familiar with it is a really approachable way to go into the subject. Um, I thought it was really interesting and it it covered a lot of topics including like really hard science as well as some more like woo woo science which I love woo woo science I think it's all very interesting um but it went into a lot of different really a lot of really cool different topics including things like sexuality um and drug use which I wasn't fully expecting like there's this chapter about I think it was LSD I don't think I went into the book assuming it was going to be about psilocybin use which is magic mushrooms but I think it was LSD slash acid slash MDMA I get them all confused anyway but I wasn't really expecting that and it was it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was a nice approachable science back, not necessarily science backed, but like science driven book. Um, I also read Think Like a Freak, which was a really easy read, quite large font, fairly small book, but it's, um, I don't know if it's the second or third follow up to Freakonomics. I can't remember if it goes Freakonomics, Super Freakonomics, and then Think Like a Freak, or Freakonomics, Think Like a Freak, Super Freakonomics. But um, I love the Freakonomics brand. I listened to a handful of their podcasts as well as I read the book in like high school. I think it was a required book and it was so good. I highly recommend anyone to read it. And I really enjoyed it. It, it discussed some of the topics that are in the next book that I'm just about to um, summarize for you. Um, so I enjoyed that because I did read the next book I'm going to talk about, I, I did read that first, so I am talking about these in reverse order. Um, but I really do enjoy reading books that kind of overlap or reference each other. It's always like, oh my gosh, I read that book. Yay. Like I'm not well versed in the subject, but I am like, I don't know. I know just to be like, oh, I read that book. I know what they're talking about. That's so fun. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I think it's really interesting and it's a good way to kind of challenge the way that you think, um, as is the same with this next book, Blink. Um, which is about like snap, not snap judgments, but like, th I can't remember what the subtitle is to any of the books that I read, but I thought Blink was incredibly interesting. Um, I love the way that it, again, it helps me challenge the way that I think and challenge my own biases. Um, cause it's like about like fast thinking and your like snap judgments and your snap th thoughts, which often are due to any sorts of biases that you might hold within yourself. And so to like maybe think about that, have that snap judgment and then think and be like, oh wait, is this because of a bias or is this because of all of these factors that I'm taking into the situation objectively? Where is the subjectivity coming into this? I don't know. I thought it was really interesting. Um, and I thought it complemented Think Like a Freak very well, again, because they overlapped. I don't remember if they just kind of overlapped and some of the similar topics were discussed, like um, doing blind auditions for like the New York Symphony. New York Symphony? I don't know, some sort of symphony orchestra thing. They both talked about that, but I don't remember if they actually referenced the like each other's books. I can't remember, um, but it was really good. Um, I also read The Only Woman in the Room, Why Science is Still a Boy's Game. A boy's... I think it's a boy's game. A, why, why Science is Still a Boy's... I can't remember. See, subtitles, man. Um, I read that. I really enjoyed it. I have a whole separate video on that, specifically talking about the book, as well as my experience as a woman in STEM. I thought it was excellent. I highly recommend it. Um, so check out that other video to learn about that. I read Sick and Tired for my WISE book club. WISE is Graduate Women in Science and Engineering. 
And Sick and Tired is, uh, the subtitle of that one is An Intimate History of Fatigue. I remember that one because it's a really short subtitle um, by Emily K. Abel. And it was really interesting. I, it was a really interesting book. It was kind of a half memoir, half look into the history of fatigue because the author had breast cancer and has been suffering from really chronic, long, long-term, very severe fatigue after her breast cancer recovery um, and due to her treatments and stuff like that. And I found it really interesting. Um, some of the things that are within that book are topics that I've learned about from, ex um, from consuming other sorts of content like on YouTube. Uh, I follow a handful of people who have like chronic pain and chronic fatigue um, such as Taylor Wynn. She has chronic migraines and Raw Beauty Christie. She has PCOS as well as cluster headaches and those are considered chronic. Um, and then also within my family like my sister has a uh, chronic illness, autoimmune disease. And so it's just something that I really try to educate myself in because it's not something that I can very easily relate to. And so I do try to go out of my way to specifically understand the way that people like this live because chronic illnesses and fatigue and everything are super duper common. Um, I do wish that she might have talked a little bit more about her experience specifically with having these issues and being a professor because she is a tenured professor. Um, just because I am in the world of academia, I think that would have been really interesting and valuable for me to hear about, but it was a good book. Then um, I also read Possum Living by Dolly Freed, which is, I don't think her actual name, that's just like the name it was published under. Um, I didn't read all of it because there were some things that were just like not relevant to me. It's basically about how to like live on not a lot of money and like without a job and kind of it's like almost like homesteading it and roughing it and like I don't know it was an interesting some things were interesting about it like there were some things that were still quite relevant but also a lot of things were not at all relevant because I think this was written in like the 70s um and there's a lot of there's a lot of questionable undertones of like racism and just general superiority complexes and it's actually kind of interesting because she she wrote it after only like a year of doing this like possum living with her dad and I think I was reading like an anniversary edition or something like that and she had like gone back as a much older woman and had like made these little like asterisk footnotes and been like now in my older age I don't recommend doing this because one of the things was about like if someone wrongs you to like show up at their house and threaten them. So I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, it was just, I would just give it a strong okay. I wouldn't really suggest anyone to go out of their way to read it unless that's something that you're like really interested in. But again, because it's written so long ago, like 50 years ago or whatever, very not applicable anymore. And then the last book of this roundup that I have read is right here. It's the one that I just finished about 10 minutes ago is The Body Keeps the Score, Brain, Mind, and Body in the Healing of Trauma by Bessel van der Kolk. Kolk? I don't know. I don't know how to say his name. Um, super good. This book went off the charts like a couple years ago. Let me see when it was written. Copyright is 2014, but I feel like I remember this being really popular in like 2018 or so. And I did find it really interesting. It was kind of cool to learn about all the different methods of um, therapy rather than just cognitive behavior therapy or talk therapy, which I think are the most commonly thought of types of therapy. And also to learn about like how difficult it was to have PTSD listed as like an actual thing, first of all, and get it into the DSM, which is like the diagnostic something manual for like mental disorders um but yeah so it talks all about trauma and ptsd within like combat veterans and child and children who experience just childhood trauma there's a lot of stuff about like sexual trauma um but i thought it was just super interesting so many different chapters about so many different types of therapy and just the, the breakthroughs and it was also really interesting because it is it is about the science but it also is a little bit of a memoir about the author's journey through learning about all of these different techniques and going through his own um, bouts of being like, well, that can't be real science. That seems a little too hand wavy, woo woo. But it ends up being 
like backed by studies and stuff like that a handful of times with all these different types of therapies so I thought it was really interesting um and yeah just really cool to learn a little bit more about PTSD again not something that I necessarily suffer from or trauma but I think it was probably going to come in handy at some point in my life to have this little bit of background knowledge so yeah so those are all the books that I have read since my last books that I've read this year video uh, again I'm thinking I'll probably get like one maybe two more books done this year and I have a whole other video about my to read list so definitely check that out and I'm going to try and finish this tea that I don't think is bad but I don't think is good and it's no longer very warm and I'm going to continue to just trying to warm up because I'm still just so cold from skiing. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow for another video on Daily December. Bye!